This is the case of William. William is a 12-year-old Doberman male castrate. William's history includes a non-weight-bearing lameness of the right forelimb that had chronic onset but recently has become much more severe. William is non-responsive to non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. On physical and orthopedic examination, William has a severe non-weight-bearing lameness involving the right front limb. There is also a very large, hard, fixed mass that is palpated in the region of the right scapula. All other physical examination findings are normal and no abnormalities were noted on CBC or chemistry panel. Our initial diagnostic plan was to obtain radiographs of the right shoulder region and scapular area as well as radiographs of the thorax. On this lateral radiograph of the scapula there is a poorly defined aggressive mass associated with the proximal aspect of the right scapular area. The caudal aspect of the scapular spine is poorly defined in this region and there is a swirling radiolucent as well as osteoproductive lesion in the mid-body to caudal aspect of the scapular area. On the cranial caudal view there is a aggressive expansile osteolytic as well as lucent lesion associated with the proximal aspect of the scapula in particular on the lateral border. There also appears to be a moderate amount of soft tissue swelling in this same area. No abnormalities are seen associated with the adjacent ribs. On the lateral view of the thorax there are typical breed related conformational changes associated with the cardiac size and shape. The pulmonary vessels and lungs are normal and no evidence of discrete pulmonary nodules or lymphadenopathy is seen. The cranial mediastinal region is also normal. Very mild spondylosis is present in the thoracic spine. No abnormalities were noted in the cranial abdomen. On the VD view, the cardiac silhouette is rounded in appearance which again is typical in this breed due to a deep chested conformation. No abnormalities are seen in the lung fields. Because the scapular lesion was so poorly defined and amputation was being considered, a CT examination of the scapula was performed to better evaluate the extent of the lesion. A CT examination of the thorax was also going to be performed at the same time to better evaluate the lungs for any evidence of small pulmonary nodules that may not be visible radiographically. In this movie of the spiral CT of the thorax, no definitive abnormalities are seen. No evidence of discrete soft tissue pulmonary nodules are evident. Panning back through the thorax, the region of the cranial mediastinal area is normal with only great vessels and fat being present in this area. The tracheal bifurcation is also normal. The pulmonary vessels taper into the peripheral portions of the thorax. A hint of the osteolytic lesion is seen in these images of the left scapular area. In the spiral CT of the scapular area, on a bone window, the aggressive osteolytic and expansile mass associated with the right scapular region is evident. The lucent area in the center is surrounded by very faint eggshell type mineralization. A large amount of lysis of the scapula itself is present, extending into the scapular spine. The contralateral side is normal. In summary, a large osteolytic and expansile lesion is present associated with the mid-body of the right scapula. The lesion does not appear to cross 
or involve the scapulohumeral joint space. There is a moderate amount of soft tissue swelling as well as radiolucency associated with this complex and poorly defined lesion of the scapula. No abnormalities were seen radiographically or on the spiral CT of the thorax. No evidence of metastatic lung disease or lymphadenopathy was present. Our radiographic diagnosis was limited to a few differentials, which include an osteosarcoma or possibly chondrosarcoma associated with the right scapular body. Because of the large amount of soft tissue component, a soft tissue sarcoma, such as a fibrosarcoma, with secondary bony invasion is also possible, but is considered less likely. Benign disease is considered extremely unlikely. William had the right front limb amputated and recovered nicely from the surgery. A biopsy of the lesion confirmed an osteosarcoma of the right scapula. William is currently being re-evaluated every two months for any evidence of metastatic lung disease, and so far there is none.